On the fifth day of October, Halloween gave to me five reeds of wolfing, four drunken uncles, three werewolf colonies, two spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween here at Legion Podcast. Uh, This is my little piece of this where each and every darn day we are doing a look at a different horror film that I'm watching. I assembled my list of 31 movies for the month and I am sharing uh, all of that with you. And I hope likewise, uh, feel free uh, on any of our social media channels, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or uh, Twitter. Um, you know, drop me a line, let me know what you're watching. Uh, that's what it's there for, and I'm very curious to see how people get up to their own celebrations this time of year. I'm very excited about the list I have assembled, and today has brought us to a movie that I haven't seen since I was a kid, which is why it made it to this list, partly because I wanted to uh, wrap up our series of werewolf movies with something that was a little unusual, you know, not do the typical American werewolf in London kind of thing. And so I went with 1961's Curse of the Werewolf, a a Hammer film production. Uh, This uh, stars Oliver Reed in all of his barrel-chested glory uh, as the, uh, the werewolf of the title. And it's kind of an interesting oddball kind of werewolf movie uh if you've never seen it it has all the lush technicolor goodness that you kind of want from a a hammer production um it is directed by terrence fisher the the estimable uh terrence fisher who did a lot of the great hammer films did uh you know horror of dracula and curse of frankenstein and um, you know, just a, a, a an incredible run of uh, of movies. The Gorgon, uh, he did, which I, I like quite a bit. Um, Brides of Dracula, which I have said before, is maybe my favorite of the Hammer vampire films. Even though it doesn't star Christopher Lee, Brides of Dracula is uh, really, really good. Um, so it's directed by a guy who knows what the hell he's doing. It stars Oliver Reed, who you probably may best remember as sort of the fat old cantankerous guy from Gladiator. Um, you know, Oliver Reed, in my mind, lives as this sort of caricature of the English alcoholic actor. And in this movie, he is certainly uh, acting for the back row. But that, you know, this is a movie that's 60 years old now, which is hard to believe. But sure enough, that... This film is 60. And so I would argue that a certain amount of uh, leeway ought to be granted to movies that are still kind of in the wake of, uh, you know, I mean, really, uh, Marlon Brando is kind of the guy that uh, that made modern acting happen. Um, he, he was one of the more naturalistic actors to, to come down. Uh, the acting pike and uh, and so yeah this still suffers from that very stagey kind of acting uh, that a lot of old films possess Um, but I would argue that uh, for the weirdness of the plot that kind of works so this isn't just uh, hey this dude got bit by a wolfman and is now a wolfman himself no 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 this has one of the more interesting uh, sort of cinematic origin stories of a werewolf where, you know, and spoilers, obviously, for Curse of the Werewolf, uh, and, and we'll be spoiling all these movies, uh, so fair warning. And there's some new stuff coming, I'll be sure to warn you, like, hey, when we talk about this new thing that you might not have seen yet, uh, you know, spoilers will be uh, addressed at that time. Um, but... For the sake of this one, like I said, uh, 60 years, uh, Statue of Limitations is up, I'm afraid, uh, on spoilers for this guy. So, what happens is, there's this beggar who rolls into town, it's all set in, in Spain, rolls into this little Spanish town, and is like, hey, how about a little, you know, something for the effort? 
And <laughs> the people at Tao tell him, hey, uh, look, we ain't got no money. If you want some money, you go ask the rich asshole who's in charge of everything. But I got to warn you, he ain't going to give you anything either. And it's probably best if you just don't go. And the beggar ignores this and instead does actually go uh, to uh, the chateau of the guy who runs the town, the lord of the town, I suppose. And it happens to be a wedding feast. And so they do the usual uh, aristocratic shit to this beggar where, you know, they throw some food on the floor and throw some wine at him and tease him for being poor and all that stuff. You know, stuff you do when you're rich. Stuff if I were rich, I would do for sure. <laughs> Is make people dance for my benefit and whatnot. But <laughs> in this case, the, uh, the new bride is more sympathetic and it's like hey don't tease this poor beggar man he does it's not his fault that he's poor so you know show him a little consideration and the lord is like oh well would you like him as your pet and she's like yeah whatever just don't make him feel like an asshole and the but the downside of this bride is that she kind of forgets once she's you know saved the guy in the short term she kind of forgets about him, and so what happens is they just throw this guy into the jail under this manor, uh, you know, like every house had cells at the time, if you were rich enough to keep your enemies and political rivals and whatnot. And so they, uh, they dump this guy in, in a jail, meanwhile there is a serving girl who is, uh, who is mute and the head of the manor in his old age um, is hitting on her. And she rejects his advances. And so uh, she is also thrown into prison. And this is much, much later, years after they've thrown the beggar into this jail cell. And the, the, the beggar has become this just animalistic dude who just eats and, and you know, uh, ogles the, the poor uh, servant girl who is then thrown into the cell with him, and the implication is that he rapes her. And then a child uh, is uh, the result of this sexual assault. This child is adopted by some other uh, more well-to-do Spaniards, and this child grows up to be Oliver Reed, who at a certain age, uh, as, a, as a kid, starts to manifest these kind of wolfman qualities where he gets fangs and tries to escape. And um, the idea is that he was born out of sin and thus possesses this uh, animal nature that he can't escape. And uh, the, the whole premise is that the only thing that can save him is the uh, true love, the true love of, of someone else. That's not a parent or anything. It's gotta be somebody that loves him that can quell this animal uh, spirit. And as luck would have it, Oliver Reed gets a, a job working on uh, the estate of uh, a guy who has a daughter who's going to be wed to a nobleman. But uh, Oliver Reed and this girl fall in love. And just when he's pretty sure that he's going to wolf out, um, it turns out that this woman kind of saves him. But naturally, it's a horror movie. One thing leads to another. Uh, she is kind of wrested away from him, and so he is left to his own devices. And uh, and there begins the wolf uh, story. And probably my biggest complaint with Curse of the Werewolf is that there's not that much werewolf. There's a whole lot of curse, not a lot of werewolf uh, to Curse of the Werewolf. It's not a bad movie, don't get me wrong. It's kind of weird, and it's entertaining, and Oliver Reed is a lot of fun because I just happen to like Oliver Reed. I think he's a fun actor and he's so intense in this movie. There's one point where he just throws himself on the ground and pounds the earth and uh, it's a real something. There's uh, another fun scene where he and his buddy go to a, a house of ill repute to do some drinking and some, uh, some you know, philandering with ladies. And, you know, he ends up uh, kind of wolfing out. Here's another fun fact about 1960s era uh, Wolfman is they rarely eviscerate the way that modern werewolves do where, you know, when they see a werewolf body, 
uh, or werewolf victim body in most modern werewolf movies. They're like, oh, he must have been attacked by animals. You know, this victim was ripped to shreds. Uh, back in the old Hammer days, the, the wolfman would uh, grow hair and fangs and claws and stuff and then just choke you. Just choke you right out. So that's kind of funny. And uh, that happens at the uh, at, at the brothel slash House of Ill Repute, uh, where Oliver Reed may or may not, as the movie plays a little coy with it, have choked to death uh, said woman of ill repute and uh, also his buddy. And there's a great scene where some uh, local law officials show up to ask Oliver Reed, you know, like, hey, uh, we, we know that you were at this place with your friend and uh just curious um what happened uh yeah i we heard you left a little early is was everything okay uh you didn't happen to you know strangle a couple of people while you while you were there did you and he's like what why no wait what happened is he all right is my friend is he all right and you're like no man you choked him to death when you wolfed out uh but yeah, it's it, it's a fun movie. Um, it's not necessarily a great movie, but it's a good time. And if you've never seen Curse of the Werewolf, I definitely recommend it. I, I would say that, you know, one of the uh, uh, big upsides of the movie is that it's only 93 minutes long and that don't hurt. So, you know, it's a great kind of throwback film. It It's not... You know, the werewolf transformation stuff is a little silly by today's standards. You know, it's more the wolf man than, uh, you know, modern practical effects. Uh, and by modern, I mean stuff that happened in the 80s. Um, but it's good. It's a good movie. And Oliver reads a lot of fun in it. And it's Terrence Fisher directing. So it's filled with a lot of kind of shots at dusk that are really colorful and lush and, and, and feel really nice. You know, is it Fisher's best work? No, it's not. Uh, yeah, like I said, the aforementioned uh, Brides of Dracula is way better. Uh, Horror of Dracula is way better. But in terms of Hammer kind of... <laughs> almost said staking uh, a claim in the werewolf genre. Haha, <laughs> stakes, Hammer. Anyway, um, it's, it's an interesting foray into this sort of subgenre of horror films in that it doesn't follow the typical rules. It kind of invents some of its own lore, which I think is kind of interesting. The whole stuff uh, with the beggar at the beginning of the movie is maybe the most interesting stuff because it really kind of digs into some, you know, class warfare kind of stuff that was uh, unusual but interesting for the time. And... You know, it has a typically, as most werewolf movies do, uh, has a typically kind of downer of an ending um, that happens pretty suddenly. I wish there were a little more werewolfing, but I also, worth saying, I really like the look of the werewolf in this movie. It's, it's very much like, hey, we're going to put this mask on you and kind of build this around your existing big head. But I really like the look of it, and... Um, Oliver Reed makes a good werewolf because he's a very physical actor to begin with. And so when he's kind of scampering around the rooftops and stuff, um, you know, as most wolves do, climbing uh, walls and scaling, you know, adobe buildings and whatnot. But it's uh, it's good. It's good. It's a fun time. And I would recommend it on that level. Is it the best movie we're going to talk about uh, for this 31 days? Absolutely not. Is the worst? Uh, probably not. We got other things to talk about that are probably not as good. Some new stuff that uh, I haven't seen yet that probably won't live up to uh, the the high standards of uh, of of a curse of the the werewolf. But it's uh, it's a good time, and especially if you like Hammer movies and want to be a bit of a completionist like I do. I do enjoy uh, the Hammer films uh, quite a lot, and so I'm uh, I'm always excited to see one that I haven't seen in a while or never seen before. Uh, that is a small list at this point, but, uh, you know, I, like I'd seen Curse of the Werewolf before, but like I said, I was, I was a kid. I was an impressionable young man. And, uh, and when I watched it, I didn't recall much of the movie at all beyond, 
uh, the the kind of last ten minutes of the movie, and and I think for good reason. I think you know the lead up to the big climax um, can be a little long winded at times. It's still pretty, but you know, push come to shove, could I have taken a nap in the middle uh, act of that movie and been fine? Probably. I could have I could have cat nap for about fifteen, been totally okay, but. Uh, uh, you know, don't let my bad behavior spoil your good time. The Curse of the Werewolf is still fun, and you ought to see it. Um, I but I feel that way about all Hammer movies. I think I think every Hammer uh, film production, uh, to one degree or another, is worth a look. But anyway, that's Curse of the Wolfman. Um, as always, I hope you enjoy these sort of eh, minor reflections, mini reviews on the movies that I'm looking at uh, for Halloween. And uh, more importantly, I like I said at uh, the upfront, I would love to hear from you guys and let me know what you're watching, what your lists look like. And while we're at it, uh, a couple of things happen around the old Legion Podcast Network. Uh, if and you haven't uh, been listening to the main feed, um, there is a new show called The Heart of Horror with me and the uh, lovely and talented Kate Pollock where we discuss horror movies in relation to love and relationships, and uh, we look forward to hearing your stories about love and relationships, and um, you will be, if you haven't already heard that first episode, it should be landing pretty soon. Um, Also, uh, check out all the other shows and make sure you're subscribing to the main feed, because that's where all kinds of fun stuff is going to be popping off. Uh, here in this wonderful month of October, the uh, the month that I I personally look forward to all year long. This is when I have the most fun. I've been doing decorations and playing with digital projectors and putting spooky girls in my windows. Uh, it's just a wonderful time. So, uh, you guys, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for supporting Legion Podcast. Uh, as always, you can check out our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. Uh, where you can support us for a buck or two a month. And uh, you get some free stuff over there, some early access to some shows, some shows that only exist uh, on the Patreon, and it helps keep the lights on around here. So we uh, we certainly appreciate your patronage, and I feel like it's a pretty good value proposition. You get some good stuff there. So anyway, that's all for now. Come back tomorrow when we are going to put werewolves in the rearview mirror and turn our attention to some other frightful